Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Bison video blog. It's been far too long. Along with Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. We are going to kick off our off-season football coverage in just a few minutes. I know everyone's looking forward to that. We've got planned for over the next couple of months to get you ready for the start of the 2015 North Dakota State football season. But there's still some spring sports going on. The North Dakota State softball team, Jeffrey, is going back to the NCAA tournament for the sixth time in seven years. The Bison won the Summit League again over the weekend. They had their highest RPI ever at 36. They're going to be heading out to the Pacific Northwest in the Oregon bracket as they'll face off with the Mountain West champions from Fresno State on Thursday. Oregon's the number two overall seed. They'll play BYU. I initially, I looked at it, I thought, personally, I thought they got a raw deal in this. To be in the second with the second overall seed does not seem fitting of a team that won 43 games this season. Yeah, they're getting pretty good at getting the overall raw deal yeah. on this thing. They played the number one seed a couple, few years ago in University back -back of Washington. Years, yeah. I don't know what to say about the national scope and whoever puts these things together. You could talk about the polls or the rankings. I, just, I, I get the feeling they don't really pay attention yeah. to North Dakota State because of the geography and because it's a mid-major it's a Summit League school. Uh, you know, Fresno State's not a bad matchup, but then you look at number two overall seed. Yeah. Uh, it just doesn't really jive, I think, with what this team has done. They're seven and one against the Big Ten, but they're two and one against the Pac-12. Yeah. They've beaten ranked teams. They beat the number ten team on the road. They beat the number twenty-one team on the road, and that's recently. I don't know what more you need to do as far as a program to get a little better position in this tournament. You look at it, too, the three other teams that NDSU played in the tournament, they beat. They swept Nebraska. The Huskers are in the field. They beat Washington. Washington's in the field. And obviously they beat Minnesota and South Alabama. So, like, what else can this team do to – and they've had success in the tournament. Now, granted, it hasn't been recent. I know they won a game last year. They beat Auburn. But I guess this is the best stage for them. And I think this is a team that can make it back to a Super Regional like the first team did way back in 2009. I, but beating the number over, two overall seed on the road is just That's a tough, tough deal. No doubt. Because Oregon has had they, – they went far last year, too. You're talking about yeah. Oregon. So – it's an experienced team. It's a pretty tournament-savvy team. Obviously, they have the pitching. They have the home field advantage. When NDSU beat Oklahoma and went into the Super Regional, they had the advantage because Oklahoma lost in its first yeah. round. And it wasn't, a team, it wasn't like a number two overall seed. It was a team that was beatable. So it's just such a tougher road now when you're talking about being in one, two, or yeah. three seeds in the country. It just Again, for what they've done at 43-19 and, and, and doing what they did with their rankings, yep. It doesn't add up to me. Well, and here's the one factor that they have that maybe is similar to that 2009 team that Andy Padilla was so good is Krista Menke has taken her game to another level, and you need that unbelievable pitcher pitching at her best, and I think she's doing that. Unlike last year where, remember, she had to pitch, what was it, 2,000 innings in the Summit League tournament just to get the Bison to the NCAAs. She's rested, and I think she's pitching her best ball of the year. Also, I think, too, in their favor, we talk about NDSU, is they have nine players on the roster from California. Yep. And so you have kids that are essentially going back near home. I mean, it's the West Coast. It's, it's a state away and a long way yep. in some cases with some of those players, but they're still going back to the West Coast, an area they've probably played a lot. I'm sure these kids... When you're in California and you're an elite high school softball player and club player, you're going everywhere. Yeah, you go a lot right. of places. So I'm sure they've traveled up to Oregon, and this is probably not going to be a new thing for a lot of them. 4 o'clock is the first pitch central time for NDSU and Fresno State. They win that game. They'll play 1 o'clock on Friday. It's an earlier start on, like, the Friday to Sunday regional. This one goes Thursday through Saturday. We'll have complete coverage on that uh, as we get closer with the Bison and the Bulldogs coming up uh, on Thursday. News that just broke before we were taping here today is the Missouri Valley Football Player of the Year from Illinois State. Bison fans know him well. Marshawn Coprich has been indefinitely suspended by Illinois State head coach uh, Brock Spack. We find out it's probably a marijuana involvement for the all-conference player, the Valley Player of the Year last year. Your initial thoughts on this? We're just finding this out. Obviously, the Redbirds don't play NDSU again this season. They're going to be probably a lot of people's ballots, maybe the preseason team to be. Well, my initial thoughts are you're talking about suspended indefinitely. Yeah. And I guess maybe some people will take that as, oh, is that the season or what? It's not the season. Uh, no, yeah. I, I th if I were to guess, a, a marijuana charge is probably, what, maybe one or two games? I would think so. Yeah. And that's the general. Right, we're speculating here. It, but, yeah. Total speculation. Yeah. But I wouldn't take this as something that's going to derail Illinois State's season. I wouldn't take that by any means because they play, to, they play at Iowa. They open the season at it Iowa. It might derail their chances there. Correct. I would say that. Their chances of beating Iowa without him go way down. I guarantee if, if nothing further happens with this situation, Dom, that Marshawn Coppridge 
for sure will be back yeah. for the Valley season. Yeah, for the Valley season, he'll be back. But it takes away that probably a chance if, if he has, and that's the season opener for Illinois State on September 5th, that he's probably not going to be playing that game. If this it materializes like we think it does. I would imagine not. Yeah. I mean, if I were the head coach, I yeah. would suspend him. I would say two games, depending on the severity of the It's a big offense. deal, though. He's the player of the year in the conference. It's not good. I mean, no. NDSU in 2009, yep. when they th went through that problem of 3-8, and eight, Absolutely. distractions, yep. they had marijuana charges, the they had stuff. this and yep. that, off-the-field stuff. Yep. So it's not a good initial thought, for no. I think, for Illinois State heading into the summer. Who believes that they are maybe the team to beat in the Missouri Valley, knowing full well what North Dakota State lost, saying we took the Bison all the way to the very end of the national championship game and thinking maybe by full right they can get back there again this season. Well, don't forget, these NDSU they don't play. and Illinois State nope. don't play this year. So Correct. actually this news for NDSU is really nothing at it's all. It's not a big deal for, for the Bison, considering they know that they won't see them unless they play again in the FCS playoffs. That's a perfect segue as we're going to begin now for the next seven weeks, we're going to take a position-by-position position look at the Bison football roster to get you ready for the 2015 season. Looking at each position, not every player, but quite a few of them, and what to expect out of them, what we think that can be expected out of them mm -hmm. for 2015. Our first segment, we're going to start. We're not neglecting the special teamers because for the Bison, their run for four consecutive championships, Jeffrey, they have been huge as special teams. So let's start first with punter and that has been remarkably consistent because Ben LeCompte will now start his fourth year on the job. He should have been an All-American I think the last two years. I think he will be in 2015. Well I think so too and you talk about Ben LeCompte. Yeah the player who should have been an All-American. He's got his own sign. Well hey, so do you <laughs> so it's a big deal. Ben LeCompte the thing about his value is the it's called the net punting yeah. statistic and Andy Estuvin has been so good at that said, over the years, you could boom at 50 yards, but if right. it's line drives, they return at 20. What good are you? But NDSU, they led the country in net punting three years ago, and he's, they've been top 10 the last couple he's years. He's so good at this, Jeff. Inside yeah. the 10, which is remarkably hard to do, but he's pinned that whoever's the offense so far deep and allowed the Bison defense to basically get a head start on, know, on offense. It reminds me from 75 yards in on the golf game. Just sticks it every time. <laughs> I just... Uh, but that's what you need. You know, you need a good punting game. It shifts the field. It gets your defense on the on the field. So you don't have to have the short field. Yeah. You know what I mean? In the Tampa two, if you have to go 80 yards or 90 yards, that's tough because that defense right. is built to stop those kind of drives. And how many times is that like a punt like this, which set the Bison up at Northern Iowa for their only points of the game this past season, to get them in position to get points on the board? I, I, it's I can't even count how many times it's happened. And one the last stat we years. put in the paper, one stat we do put in the paper every Saturday when our game day statistics is inside the 20 on punts. Yeah. And LeCompte's always been pretty high in that category. That's what you look for. And when you look yep. at stats, it's great if you hit a 50-yard punt. If you're averaging 49 yards a punt, that's great. That's really good. But I look at net punting, and I look at inside, inside the, the 20. 20. That's the one I always circle as well. The other one that you should focus on is punts blocked. It's a big, fat goose egg. I can't remember. The last one I could actually remember was, I think, 2011, and that was before LeCompte got the full-time job. He was redshirting that season, and that's been huge of why they've been so successful on special Right, teams. and that switch when Tim Paulson went down to Wake Forest and learned the new yeah. scheme as far as the shield, right? The shield yeah. and the wide splits. Yep. And since they've done that, they have rarely, I, mean, I think they've had one punt block. Yeah, I'm trying to think of one. The Western Illinois one I remember in 2011, but I can't remember much after that where they've been. And that's, you were, you went, you were talking about 2008, 2009 earlier. That's a big reason why they struggled that season. They were not good on special teams, and they've been remarkably good in that area. And, and that's a, and again, that's a, you don't win four titles in a row nope. unless you're good in that area. Now, the other position on special teams is a biggie, and that's kicker. And that's something we talked about at the end of the spring game, and we're not going to have an answer on that as we go into fall camp. Tom Barnison, I don't know if he's the incumbent. He got work at at play skater last year, but also, surprisingly, we found out that Ben LeCompte is getting a full chance at kicker there. So take us through these two guys. LeCompte, we saw during the spring, he's got a pretty solid leg at kicker. I think he's number one coming out of spring. I really do. I remember going into the end of practice one time this spring, and I saw number 19 kicking field goals, and I thought, okay, what is this? Is, yeah. just, is he just joking around, or is he just screwing around? No. no. He's got a good leg, he too. Does. He, it comes off his foot uh, pretty powerful, and what he has, I think, what the coaches really like, what he has, he has that experience factor. The stage will not be too big for him. When he goes into Washington Grizzly yeah. on August 30th and goes into the University of Montana, he's not going to freak out at the whole situation. Now, we don't know about Barnison. You know, he's, he's had a little bit of reps. Yep, He has not kicked a whole lot. And so, he, we know he has a strong leg, and he handled some kickoffs last season, but... 
obviously, Chris Kleiman doesn't trust him right now or else the job would have been his. There wouldn't be any really debate about it. If it's open going into fall, right. I think it's Ben LeConte's job right now. And But now, now that begs the question, you have a kicker and a punter at the same right. job. We've seen that over the years with teams every once in a while, and that's a tough, that's a tough thing to yeah. do. That's it. You're asking an awful lot of a guy. Usually, they're they're good at one and okay right. in the other. You're, you're rarely really good at place kicking and punting, and punting with the same guy. And you're also assuming that and Lacomp has done kickoff duty as well. He can't do all three. That he's going to lose one. I of those. think he will. He's got really. You think he's still going to do kickoffs as well? Well, I mean, wow. I put, don't know about that. I think he would lose one of those titles. Well, you would hope that one of these kickers, Cam Peterson's would, would coming rise up, correct. from Wisconsin, yep. and he'll get a shot at, yeah. at, at winning this job, too. I think that's one of the positions we're keeping an eye on when fall camp begins in early August, though, that you should circle to say, let's see what happens. But I, I'm not betting against you that number 19 might be doing some place kicking come uh, August 29th when they're playing at Montana that day. I, I, think, it's, I think it's a done deal. I think yeah. he will be the kicker at Montana unless... Unless um, something happens there. Yeah, unless something different happens. Yeah. All right, folks, so there you have it. That's position breakdown number one. As we go through the How many entire, do we have we, left? we got six more to do, so you can buckle up for that. All They'll right. be coming over the next six weeks. For Jeff Colbeck, I'm Don Mizzo. That's the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog.